Hey guys, Punjer here, and I wanted to share with you some of the new updates with OBS. And you may not be familiar with what they are doing, but they are coming out with a new version of open broadcast software. Right now, if you look on their website, you'll see it as OBS Multi-Platform. They have been calling it OBS Studio. I imagine that's probably what the real name will be once the final version comes out. Currently in beta, but you can download it, you can test it for yourself. And this is going to give you a lot of features that you're not used to with the standard of broadcast software. This, I think, will take and make uh, other recording softwares obsolete. And especially, I think it'll be a great contender for uh, DxTory, as not only does it give you pretty much all the same functionality that DxTory will give you, it gives you more, plus it's free. That's the big key, you know, uh, DX Story costs like 30 bucks. This is absolutely free. They're not gonna charge you for it. It's open source software designed by the community to be used by the community. So that's why I really try to promote this software. I think it's great. I've been using it now for a couple years and you can use this not only for streaming, but you can use it for recording your standard gameplay for use in YouTube. So I recommend you ch check this out, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything that you need to know about OBS Studio that you can use to set up a stream that you can use for set up, you know, set up your recording. It's going to give you all the information that you're going to need so that you can understand how to use this effectively. So let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. I want to apologize because this is going to be fairly long, pretty lengthy, but it's going to walk you through every little step. It's going to show you all the different UI changes and it'll give you, I'll give you an explanation of each as best as I can. So here we go. Alright guys, I wanted to go through the new OBS Studio UI. This is something new. Run through the standard features that you need to know about to help you stream and record using OBS Studio. Trust me when I say this, I think this will be an all-in-one solution for your recording and streaming needs. I really believe that this will alleviate the need for using DxTory and XSplit. Once they get full functionality, this thing comes into full uh, release out of the beta and they support all of the encoder options that the original OBS uh, supported. So anyway, I wanted to run through things real quick. As you can see, if you are familiar with open broadcast software, okay, you notice there is a lot of similarities, but there are some major differences also in the UI. They have made the UI a lot more user friendly. It's a lot more intuitive, easy to use and I'm going to run through things real quick. First things first, scenes and sources. Okay, that is standard just like the uh, original OBS, standard OBS. You have scenes and sources. You can add, uh, make a scene. As you can see here, I have a scene here and I have added a source Twitch alerts. Okay, you can also add your game capture. You can add, uh, add a video, video capture device. You can do a uh, media source which would be uh, you could input a video using a player such as Windows Media Player you can use it for that browser source that's the same thing as CLR browser and standard OBS you can use that now that's what I actually use for my twitch alerts twitch alerts uses an API uh, URL API to you do your twitch alerts and that's a, and you need to use browser uh, to do browser source to do that so that is what CLR browser is right here it is now called browser source when you go to obsproject.org and you go into the multi-platform plugins this is what you'll see you'll get a browser source this is what a lot of those apis use i recommend you download it works good it works good so uh, i haven't had any problems with it yet but anyway this is standard this is you know similar to uh, obs standard where you can add all your different sources together. One of the things that is different though, and you can see these little up and down arrows here at the bottom of your scenes and the bottom of your sources, okay? Before when you had a, you know, separate different little sources there, uh, you had to go into the order and, you know, use the menu options here to move them up and down. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Now you have these arrows, you can actually move. I'll tell you what, I'll go here. This is actually my main game stream here that I use to stream to my personal stuff. You can see I have my DRMB overlay, okay, at the top, and you can see that I can actually move that down. You see it disappear using these arrows. I can move it up, move it down to wherever I need it to be, and it works really good. And so it alleviates the need of having to use the drop-down menus 
like you had to do in standard OBS. Uh, a couple other things that is a little different. Okay, you notice that I am using a chroma key on my webcam. Okay, that is now you have to go through this thing called filters. Okay, and this is a separate little UI that you bring up, and you can add these little filters to your sources. And this is standard for all sources. You can have these added to any of them. But so that's this is how you would access chroma key. This is something that has been added within the last couple builds. They originally weren't supporting it, uh, but they've just recently added it. So you have chroma key. You can add that. When you do that, this is the UI that comes up. Okay, where you can actually select the color for your background. You can do a custom color. You can do just a standard pick a green, and then you have to go in and you have to really kind of play with the different settings to get it to uh, show up right. The one thing that they don't have that the original OBS has that I preferred is the little medicine dropper uh, sampler that you could actually get the true color of your background. That way you didn't have to play around and tweak so much. But unfortunately, I don't have that right now. I think that they possibly may come out with it. I have not heard whether they will or will not. But so many people liked it, I can't imagine that they wouldn't. So anyway, but that's Chroma Key. That's how that works. And uh, so anyway, that's it. Uh, scenes and sources pretty standard, uh, very similar to the standard OBS. All right, the big thing that's different though, and you can see here is you have an audio mixer. And you can see as I'm talking into my uh, Snowball microphone, you can see the LED or whatever level indicator going up and down as I talk. Okay, you have a volume control that I can adjust, that I can move back and forth. You also have settings where you can add filters, and this is a big deal for some microphones. The Blue Snowball is a perfect example. A lot of people complain about how low volume they are. They don't, you know, you don't, when you record them, it seems like the level is really low. OBS Studio has a built-in gain control that you can actually add as a filter. So you would add gain and then, you know, select OK if you, if it ha if you haven't added it before. And then now you have a gain control where you can boost your gain up on your microphone and you can see that it goes really loud or I can boost it back, you know, move it back down to a, an appreciable level of gain but that's really nice for microphones that don't have a lot of signal such as the blue snowball so that's built in and you can have that set all the time so when you record or when you stream you have a good sound level coming from your microphone okay so you can see here i have mic i have desktop audio too that's a uh, your aux desktop aux i have regular desktop audio you know another aux for a mic you can see uh, my mic aux 3 is also selected as recording you got media source okay that would be the that plug in right there in your sources you can have a video you know playing and you can actually control the volume of it separate from everything else that's really nice you can also control your webcam if you have an audio source coming in from that really cool really cool this is brand new uh, that's come out with OBS Studio not you know something that you're used to seeing it's awesome does a really nice job now here's what I want to kind of feature and tell you about that the latest version of OBS Studio that they've just released has given you the capability of doing okay you have this mixer in here and you can see here here's all these inputs that we just went through all the different sliders the volume uh, control here is just representative of the position of your slider down here on your main UI okay you have the ability to mix these down to a mono okay that would be good for say if you were recording uh, an instrument you can actually plug in an instrument into one of these auxes and record a guitar if you want say you wanted to do a YouTube video where you're playing you can actually plug in your guitar to your computer and record to one of these auxes here okay and you can control the levels and mix that properly you would want to do that you would want to mix that to a mono okay if you if you were using a stereo input to record with uh, webcam same thing anything with microphone you would want to do a mix down okay you here you can pan if you're in stereo you can pan your uh, audio right or left and also here's your sync you can actually offset that if you want to I don't know why you would want to but you know you can offset your audio 
and that's in milliseconds. Okay, now here's the important thing. This is what I want you to understand, okay? All right, you have all your different tracks here, okay? You can actually have one track record all sources, okay? So this would be track one here, and you can have this one track record all of these four sources here, okay? When I check these, these are what sources are, okay? Or you can have this one track record just a single source. In the event here, it will record just desktop audio. Okay, here I have track two recording source two, which would be desktop audio two. And likewise, I could have track three recording my mic. Track four I have here selected. Now track four right now, for me, the way I have it set up, this is where my stream feeds off of, is this, this aux two track. So I can have I have all of my tracks selected because that's what I want people, you know, I want to send into my broadcast. Now, if you didn't want your team speak in there, say you had team speak going to one of these, you could uh, ch uncheck that. That would cut your uh, team speak stuff out. So, but this is the key though. You have the ability now to record four separate audio tracks so that you can import that into Premiere and you have. A single source audio you have TeamSpeak by itself you have your game audio by itself if somebody says something on TeamSpeak that you don't want in your video you you know previously you that stuff was all recorded and layered onto one track now you have four separate tracks that you can cut out that that voice or whatever that sound that you didn't want in your video without affecting your game audio or you know any other audio that you had recorded really cool thing to do so make sure this is how you would have it set up okay say so if I was just recording and not streaming I would record and get rid of these four th these first three sources that way you have a separate audio source going to each track just like that and you could actually import that into Premiere 2015 okay that, that's the only one 2014 and earlier it does not work 2015 only so that's good to know but you have that ability now. It's really cool. I like it. Uh, other than that, you can tell that you have the normal button, start stream, start recording your settings, okay, and then, of course, exit. There's a button button missing that you are used to having on standard OBS that is not there anymore. That is your preview stream, okay? Well, as you can see, my preview stream is actually working, okay? It turns on automatically when you start it up. You don't have to turn it on and off anymore. It's just there. So it's good. I like it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Now let's get into settings because this is another major change in how the UI works compared to standard OBS. Okay. You can see here you have general. Okay. You have a couple different themes you can do to default, which is the standard white. I'm not going to bother showing you because you'll blind yourself. I like this dark theme. I really do. It's easy on my eyes. Okay, you can do your uh, language selections there for all your different languages. Okay, now stream, you go in here, you can see that compared to standard OBS, they've taken a lot of the information out and they've, uh, you know, really concentrated it on the information you need just for streaming. Okay, so here you can uh, do a custom streaming server. You can do your streaming services, which would be your Twitch, your Hitbox, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Here's all your different selections that you could choose. And then, of course, the server that you would use, in case of me, I always use Ashburn Virginia server for Twitch. And then you plug in your stream key. That's it for streaming. Okay, that's all you have to input for your server information. Okay, now output. Okay, here you have a couple different selections. You have simple, as you can see there. They just kind of make it a little easier for you. Or you have advanced. I would honestly recommend everybody just use advanced because you can see here it gives you tons of options that you could do for streaming, for recording, and for audio. Okay, for streaming. Okay, typically this is the stuff that you would see in OBS standard on the streaming uh, portion of the UI. Now they've taken it and moved it to this output section. You can see here audio track four is what is going to my stream. As I told you before, you could choose your encoder. Okay, on old standard OBS, you had X264, you had Quick Sync, you had NVENC, and I think you had one more. I can't honestly remember what it was. No, that was it. So you have X264, you have Quick Sync, and you have NVENC on standard. Right now, 
Only thing supported is X264. They are currently working on getting the other encoders incorporated into hopefully the next build or next couple builds of Studio. So right now X264 is it. So if you have a, a lower end CPU, you might want to consider holding off on Studio because I mean, I'm right on the border. There are some games I cannot stream using OBS Studio, for instance, Battlefield. It just uses too much of my CPU already. And when I start streaming using Studio, it puts my CPU at my threshold and I start seeing a ton of lag. But so I, you know, if you're still using, say for instance, like me, I stream using NVENC when I'm playing uh, Battlefield. That's the NVIDIA encoder, the CUDA, or if you've, uh, you've heard that acronym. That's what I'll use. So I still have to use standard for that. But for like World Warships, I can use this. Or if I'm just doing recording, I can use this, and it works really good. So to rescale outputs, you can actually have that to, you know, unchecked, and that will stay uh, your output at your nat uh, native rev resolution. Or you can rescale it down. And in the case here, I like to stream at 720p 60. Okay, bit rate same. It works the same rules as uh, standard OBS. You, you know, typically you don't want it any higher than 3500 because that's the max that Twitch will allow you to uh, send to them. Okay, I usually keep it around 20. I've actually been streaming at 2500, and the quality looks really good. It's not bad at all. So. And you can do your custom bus buff or size if you want to do that. I would recommend leaving that blank because then that will match whatever your bit rate is. And then your auto, your uh, keyframe interval, Twitch recommends leaving that at zero or an auto. And then, of course, you got constant bit rate. I recommend using that because if you happen to pull this into a piece of software like Premiere, that will keep your audio in sync with your video. Okay. Now here, here's another thing that you're used to seeing with the X264 is you choose your CPU usage preset. The default is very fast. If you want a higher quality video, okay, you can go to fast or medium, but you know, be aware that you're going to have a lot more CPU usage by doing that. Or if you have a problem with CPU usage with X264, you could actually go to super fast or ultra fast to take some of the load off, but you will then hinder the quality of your video. And then here's your profile again. This is also in standard OBS. You got baseline, you got main, you got high. Main is the default, and that's what I use. Okay, now you can see I got three tabs here. You got streaming, that's what we just went through. Now we can go to recording, and you can actually set this up. Now I leave this in standard because, be honest with you, if you go to the advanced or to the custom output FM, uh, FFmpeg and you start selecting your stuff, I cannot get it to work properly. It, whenever I try to import video to Premiere, if I use this FFmpeg uh, output, I have error. So, I, you know, in standard, I can select everything that I need and still, you know, get quality video. So, you know, I have my recording path here. Uh, I have my recording output. This is something that they have just added with this build. Before, you can only do flash video. Now you can do MP4, you can do MOV. So it's very nice. Love it, love it. You can select your encoder again, okay, X264. You can also, if you wanted to rescale your output down, I don't know why you would for recording, but if you wanted to, you can also do that there. But I, like I said, for recording, I want to record at native resolution, so I'll leave that unchecked. And then bit rate here, you know, the higher the bit rate, the better quality your video is gonna be, okay, so, if, for recording, I would use something around anywhere from 30 to 60,000. 60,000 is standard for your high quality video. Uh, NVENC supports it really well, 1080p at 60 frames, and you could record at this bit rate with no frame loss. Now, with X264, it's a little different. You have to play with your settings a little bit and see what you can do uh, without totally hindering. Uh, your CPU and without taking a drastic frame rate hit when you're playing your games. But other, other than that, it's the standard stuff like we already went through with your streaming down here at the bottom. Okay, now audio. Here is your audio tracks. You can select what bit rate you want for your audio tracks. They default at 160. They go up to 320. Okay, for the purpose of saving space, I would recommend going no higher than 192 
with YouTube video, you don't really need 320. I think that's overkill for the purposes of doing, uh, you know, YouTube videos. 192, I would say, would be the max. 192 is considered CD quality. 128 is your standard MP3 bit rate. Okay, so you can do all that. You can actually rename your tracks if you want to. I don't really, personally, I don't see a need why I would do that. But you do have that ability. And so just keep that in mind. And that's really uh, it for all of your uh, output settings. Okay, audio here. You have your sample rate is, you know, where you can set up your 44.1 is your default. You got stereo uh, channels. And then here's all of your audio devices again that we have seen. And you can actually see, you can actually go here and actually select the actual Windows input that you want for each of these channels, okay? So that's how that works. Pretty nice. Now you see here I'm using voice meter. And this is something that some people have talked about. I have a video on my channel about voice meter if you want to go to that and learn a little bit more about that. But it is a software mixer. I'll give you a quick shot of it real quick. But you can see right there and that is voice beater banana this is what i use for my live stream for my pot for the podcast for drmb it works really well i like it a lot i can actually control this to feed my headphones separate from the stream and you know control the levels control the sources that i want to hear in my headphones compared to my live stream or to the recording uh, it's really nice I like it a lot and it's given me a little bit more flexibility in OBS and so you can see here I have my desktop audio device uh, you can I mean you can use the standard Windows stuff but I am using the voice meter because I can have additional controls such as echo uh, additional balance adjustments and compression stuff like that that can make the audio sound better so here I got the, my voice meter input, which is the first virtual input there. And the aux input here is the second desktop audio. This is where my Skype, my Spotify, uh, you know, those kind of things can kind of come in. I have a separate track for my microphone. Then here are two different audio things I got going through here. I have TeamSpeak, comms audio cable A is a virtual audio cable. That's where I have my TeamSpeak coming in. And then here is another just the output voice audio three. Now this output is a feed that will feed all these inputs to an output. So if I want this to go to my live stream, uh, I can just use this uh, aux device three to feed the live stream if I wanted to do that. And then all of your different sources here, you have push to talk controls, you got push to mute. Okay, you actually do the hotkeys in a separate area, which we'll go over here in a few minutes, but you can enable these or disable them. Might be good for your desktop, uh, your mic, okay, if you want to do that, or, you know, if you just want to leave it open. I leave it open, you know, because I don't really want to have to think about having to press something to press my microphone when I'm talking on the live stream, but you have that ability, and you can do that for each of your audio sources and that's really it for your audio so video okay here you have a couple different options for DX11 or OpenGL I'm not quite sure what this video adapter thing does but I mean as you can see I'm trying to click on it and I can't select anything base resolution okay this is my native resolution of my displays you can scale that down if you want to but I don't really see a reason why you would want to and if you were to downscale, you can use the different filters to uh, use that. Now for live streaming, this is what I use. I use this uh, Lanxos uh, sharpening scaling uh, filter. You have the bilinear, which you've seen that in uh, OBS before, and bicubic, but I like this. It really makes the uh, picture a lot sharper and it's a better quality. And then here you can set your frame rate for your video, you know, your standard 30 or 60. I like recording at 60. And that's it. Now, hotkeys, you can see here, man, you got a load of hotkeys. Okay. You have a hotkey for each of your scenes. Okay. This is nice because you have an automatic swing, scene switcher built into the program now. You don't have to use a plug-in like you used to. So you have an automatic scene switcher built in. You can program hotkeys to switch between your different scenes. So I can go from uh, my desktop to my game stream. I can go to the podcast just by pressing these F you know, keys that I have selected here. Within that, you can see 
you can also program hotkeys for each of your sources within your scene. So I have my monitor capture. If I want to hide my monitor capture, I can program a key there. If I want to show game capture, you know, I can set up a key for that. That would be, that's actually pretty nice. Something that I haven't had set up yet, but I can see why you would want to do that because it keeps you from having to alt tab out of your game to go into OBS, turn your video uh, capture off or your monitor capture off. When you do that, you know, you alt tab out, that's going to freeze your stream. It's going to freeze your game. So this is actually a very nice option to actually, you know, set these hotkeys up. I would have to do a map or, you know, write them down because there's no way I would be able to remember all those, you know, right off the top of my head. But that is available to you and I could see how useful it would be. But as you see, you know, each of my scenes I have built here, I have a scene switcher that I could program a key to and then to each of the sources in those scenes I can have a key uh, selected. Now you also have a hotkey for audio. If you want to mute, unmute your audio, here's where you would program the key to do your push to talk or push to mute for each of your audio sources. A ton of, ton of options with hotkeys. And in advance here, your audio buffering time is a thousand. That's default. I haven't touched it and I haven't had any problems with the settings here. And in your video format, okay, here different options here. MV12 is a standard and that works good. I don't have any problem with that. I've left all these at default, but if you find a, that you want to change that or if you've read up on it and you find out about these different settings and there is a better setting, then you know what? Use it if it doesn't affect your performance. But guys, let me know. This uh, this OBS Studio is really good. I like it a lot. I, you know, use it now it, pretty much all the time uh, as I'm playing a lot of World of Warships, and it gives you that functionality with your audio now to where you can actually record those separate tracks, and you can input those into Premiere 2015. Remember that have you know better editing controls over your audio, which is it's nice. I like it. So if you've got any questions, guys, let me know. Tell me how you like OBS Studio. If you have not downloaded it, you can go to obsproject.org. Go to their front page there. On the right side, you'll see multi-platform. You'll see a couple different buttons. This is out for Windows, Linux, and for Mac OS. So it, no matter what, you have OBS Studio supporting you know, all the major OSs out there. You can use it, and it works great. But you can get there. You can download the latest. It is an installer now as compared to OBS Studio where you had a zip file and you just had to kind of manually extract those and make a folder and then have a desktop shortcut. Now this has its own installer so you don't have to worry about any of that. Works really nice. It also has a uh, check for update link right there under your help. You can actually go to the website right here by hitting that button. So Go out there and give it a shot. I mean, this is really good stuff. Gives you a lot of functionality. It gives you multiple color text now. As you can see, I could, let me show you that real quick. I just thought about it. Where is that? There you go. So you can uh, you can do a text. Uh, you can, it gives you a nice UI for text now. You can actually select different colors, okay. So you do an orange right there and you can see this is how it's going to appear on, on your stream. You can change your fonts. So pretty cool stuff. I, I like it. I really do. And uh, it gives you, you know, even more customization that you can do for your stream. So that's really it, guys. I hope you have a, a great day. I hope this is helpful to you. If you don't mind, give me a like if you liked it and it helped you out. I will provide links in my comments below. That's it. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you later.